Dave here, how are you? And welcome to the final stage of this pencil box build. It's been a journey, but we're getting there. This is the end. Now, I like to flash back to the previous episode. I, after I review it and I have a look at it, I think, hmm, I could have done a little bit better there. Now, for last episode, when I was showing you how to create the rebate in the bottom of the drawers here, this rebate here, I was talking about holding it down onto the router table and pulling it around, but being very careful. Here's another suggestion. Get yourself some of these. These are a non-slip push block. You can hold something down, just as long as the cut is not taller than what you're cutting. You can hold that down and feel a whole lot more secure. These things grab well. Two of them, one on either end, just to hold it and pull it around is a good idea. That's, that's another option as well. But may, mostly, very close to the cutter, this will hold it down so you get the full cut. So it's going to be the proper depth and it's not going to lift at all. It will do a much better job for you. Give that a shot. I don't know if we covered it last week, but belt sand the underside of the box. Don't go through the plywood finish. Don't, don't go through this uh, actual last laminate of ply because it's only very thin. It's normally a, a veneer that's on top of the more structural base underneath. So careful, but take off the lip. Take the lip off of any of this that's sitting proud up above the plywood. Get rid of that. This is the part a lot of people have been waiting for, making the actual cradles. Now, I took some photos of my test cases where I'd tried to use my core box bit across the grain or along the grain to see which I would get the best result from. And I found going along the grain was far superior. To do that, what I did was I joined three pieces of timber together and I basically made a small tabletop. Same way, I put dominoes in these positions here, I drew it out so I knew where I was going. You can use dowels, you can use biscuit joints, but the thing is, make sure that you have all of them close to the bottom of this piece of timber when it's all joined up. Don't have it close to the top, the side all the slots are going to be in, because you may expose them when you run the core box bit over. So favour the bottom side to start. This is 18 millimetres or three quarter inch thick. It normally ends up 18 millimetres in Australia because it's all dressed. So. It was probably out of three quarter inch stock. Three quarter inch, I think, is 19.05 millimeters. So we'll talk about 19, but it actually comes 18. And I think the width was around 135 millimeters each, 140, could be around that. Join them all together, glue them, clamp them up, and let them dry. Uh, you'll see here, these are the widths that I'm gonna be cutting. So I drew it all out, so I knew exactly where I was going when I did the joints. If you're making a five drawer box, you'll probably want something a bit longer than this. You might want to go about 1.2 meters overall, four feet overall. Dress one edge so it's nice and straight and then put it through the table saw, put it through the saw to 380 millimeters wide overall and that will give you this width and that will give us 36 slots that are 10 millimeters wide. Well that will be our spacings when we do it and we will have two 10 millimeter spaces out side, either side, that we can trim to fit each unit, each individual cradle into its drawer. We're going to match them. So it's, it's all good fun. It's easy to do. It's just use your thinking cap a little bit and away we go. Okay, next thing we take it to the router table and we set the core box bit up. This is a core box bit. It's a semi-circular cut and you can call it a core box bit or you can call it a nosing bit. Again, as I said before, depend on which company makes it. Okay, so this particular one is a three-eighths of an inch diameter. That's across the whole cutter. So half of three-eighths is going to be three-sixteenths, which will be the radius. Now, we need to know that because we need to set the depth to the radius, which is three-sixteenths. So we've spent a bit of time at the router table, set your depth so it's correct, do a couple of tests, and make sure that the pencil sits in there snugly. You don't want it going any deeper because it's a waste of time pushing it down deep. You won't be able to get the pencil out of the box as easily. There's two ways we can do this. If you've been very good with your 380 millimeter width, we can set the fence on the router table to 10 millimeters from the back of the cutter. Now I have a tape that I've put on my table saw, which also is the um, support for my router table fence. It works very well. Um, and then I just set it up so that I'm going to advance 10 millimeters away from the cutter each time. Now there's another way of doing it if you want to be a little bit more accurate and go to the center of the board and then do your first 
two cuts 10 millimeters out from the center. So basically, we're going to cut those two there first. So the fence is going to be all the way up to there. And then we're slowly going to bring the fence back towards the cutter 10 millimeters at a time. And we'll end up out here as our last cuts, but that's not the way that I did it. I just flew things. Now, whilst we're doing this, making this cradle over on the router table, you will see a lot of furring happens. And that's not to worry. Now what we can do is we can get a piece of quarter inch dowel and some 180 grit sandpaper and we can sand all of these individual channels. Of course, what, what would we call them? Channels, trenches, slots? I don't know, but they're a semicircular slot. There we go. So we can sand all of those individually. Dough and pencils come in different size boxes. Now this is the reason that I've gone to 36 slots wide because that seems to me to be the most common size for people to buy pencils in. 30, a pack of 36 and I just happen to have the different sizes here. So there's the 36 and by the way this is the type that I like. I love their pastels. These are the easiest to use. They're, they're just magic. Uh, so you can get them in a pack of 72 and basically what that means is there's two layers in there and if you're just starting out and you want to give it a shot, 12. So you can try different types. Buy one, buy one of the other, buy 12 of one, buy 12 of another. You get an assortment of colours. The more colour, sorry, the more pencils you get in one box, the greater the, the, the variance of colour is. That's a little tip. That's, that's by the by, and don't, don't pay me to talk about this. It's just a, a love from when I was a kid. I love these pencils. When we have put all of these slots in this board, we have increased the surface area big time. So this is going to absorb moisture or release moisture a whole lot quicker than that flat surface area there. Now you'll find that these boards will cup up quickly because this side dries out more and this side is still retaining moisture a little bit in comparison to the other side. These fibers, because they've got moisture in them, are larger. These ones, because they've lost all the moisture, are going to be smaller. And so, of course, they will pull and contract. While I'm waiting for the next stage of the job to happen, I might be doing other things. I stack these upside down, I put weights on them. Now, the other thing you can do is before you glue this piece on, this is a stiffener and also the border for the gutter at the back that takes erasers and sharpeners and things. Before we put that on, I want this to be straight. It's going to have this. So, I leave it up like that and I can use a heater above or if it's a nice dry day just leave it on the bench you'll find that it will start to straighten out or in this I'm pretty fortunate I've got an air conditioner in here I can turn that on and leave it and it'll dry the air out and it will come straight. Once it's become straight I glue a nail the uh, back section on and the other thing is, this is seasoned timber. If this won't work with green timber, it's going to split. So you must have it seasoned before you put long grain nailed and glued to a cross grain to stop it splitting. Anyway, we're going to glue a nail and we're going to leave it flush with the edge. And it's going to hang out the ends a bit, doesn't matter. Then we need to dock either end to fit into the tray or into the drawer. So it's a perfect fit. I haven't put the bottom in the, this drawer yet, but you just do it so that it, it fits in nicely. That's going to be pretty good, isn't it? Okay, that's where it's going to live. And then we're going to plane the um, stiffener off so it's flush, or put it on the belt sander and plane it off that way. So hold it down on the belt sander, and again, push blocks, make life a whole lot safer. Gluing the cradle into the drawer now. So what I'm going to do is I've got some video here. Spread the glue out all over the, the cradle, not on the draw base, because we're going to make sure that it's going in the position we want it. Turn upside down, drop it in. Now, before we do that, you need to measure out on either side of the draw base the length of the pencil. So, doing pencils are around about 180 millimeters long. So, I allow just a little bit of play, a couple of mil, maybe 180, 283. Glue it in and put a piece of board on top. Make sure the board is no bigger so it's not it's not going over the edges of the drawer itself 
it's actually pushing down onto the cradle only and that's this part not pushing on there just this part here then we get our he-man weights again drop one of those on and leave it now if your board hasn't pulled totally straight and got a bit of a bow up you can put a clamp either side and pull it down you will find that once it's dried and it's been laminated onto this plywood it will become extremely stable you will have a very hard time it, it can't twist it's almost like a torsion box it's going to hold it so well you're laminating this stuff laminated timbers are horribly strong and stiff they will not bend there you go that's just for the naysayers we've got all our five or all our three depending on which unit you make this is a three this is another one <laughs> all of our three or five drawers made and we're going to fit them individually to each slot so we're going to make sure the drawer fits in there and we'll mark it on the underside or at the back we're going to write one on it and bottom and that will make us realize that we're starting from the bottom and working up the next drawer we fit we're right at the back of it two and how we fit them is and, and of course all the way up to five or all the way up to three we're going to sand the edges and we're going to sand the tops as well so it fits in there beautifully at the moment it's okay but it's still catching so it's not a lot of sanding to do now we're going to make the handles these little guys and they're not hard to do we're going to get some contrasting timbers now i used purple heart and rock maple because they do contrast big time and they look just beautiful now purple heart i had never heard of purple heart till a couple of years ago when i was watching the wood whisperer do things and he was always using purple heart i think he used it in his workbench that he built as well now purple heart is a boring old looking timber when you look at it like that you're going to say well what's the great thing about it dave here's the thing when you cut it open and expose it to ultraviolet light it goes from this to that very very expensive very hard but I've got that big chunk I found it I'm not going to tell you how much it cost me <laughs> it was way too much but I will keep that and I'll just cut little bits off at a time as I need it so if you see some grab it put it away and keep it and just drag it out when you want it I love it all right rock maple beautiful timber it's extremely forgiving if you if you stuff things up it's beautiful to sand it's beautiful to plain so enough talking about purple heart and how i love it we're going to run it through the table saw or the band saw if it's very precious you might be able to use a thinnish blade and take your time and cut it and then i'm going to plane it so i ran mine through the thickness at a very very shallow cut and even then it tore out a bit because purple heart is extremely uh, extremely tough if you can get a hand plane with a very tall angle on it that might be the best as well so almost like scraping um, and away you go you can get a finish next thing you don't but see it didn't concern me too much because it was my center part that i was laminating so i had the rock maple the purple heart rock maple and they were all around about six or seven millimeters thick after they were dressed i laid it all out on the bench so i could see what was going on with it and it's like glued it together put in the clamps left it there and then got the hand plane out because i was having a nostalgic time there <laughs> just planing away enjoying myself but eventually I had to put it over the jointer to get a straight edge because uh, I'm not good enough <laughs> I, I love my machine sorry anyway but got it over the jointer and then ripped it down to the width now the width of these handles I think was around about 22 millimeters around that shy of shy of an inch uh, because that's the size that I had and I didn't have any time any area to waste the purple heart came in that thick slab that you saw there so it was half of that less the saw cut if that makes sense to you go for it that ended up being 22 millimeters jointed the whole lot and then i need to cut the length so the length was i think around five inches something like that let me tell you exactly what the length was the length was five and three eighths inches which in ordinary talk is 135 millimeters now i wanted to create that rebate for my fingers to get a hold so i'm just not grabbing onto the outside of the handle and slipping off i wanted a positive indent in there for me to get a hold of to grip to pull the handle out so i did that with a dish cutter this guy here is a dish cutter bring it up close 
So it's it's basically a it's basically a nosing or a call box bit, but instead of being uh, continual all the way, they've separated it. So it's flat and it's got your radiuses on either side. Pop that in the router table and I set it to the depth so that we were going through one of the laminates, which was the rock maple, by around about two millimeters past. So we're going into the purple heart ever so slightly. So we we're seeing the rock maple, then the purple heart in that dish as well. So you know, it works both sides of the handle. I liked it. Now the way I did that was I set up two stops on my router table's fence. And again, I used the push block. But this time instead of the edge, I used the front and pushed it in. And here's the video of me doing it. I pushed the piece of timber into the right hand stop on the router table, then slowly pushed it into the path of the cutter and then slid it along from right to left to the stop on the left hand side. Now I made sure that I'd set all that up first so I had equal spaces um, of timber left over either side. All right, now I've got these blanks that have got these rebates in them. Now I wanted to make it friendlier again, so I wanted the radius on the outside of the um, handle. So I wanted these radiuses there. So I just used anything I had lying around, same as I did with the box bit, box bases. I just found something that the right radius and traced around it with a pencil. Took it over to the belt, oh sorry, took it over to the disc sander and very carefully made, uh, took that off. Now I'd, I could have used the bandsaw, but again, it's a lot of mucking around to set the saw up just for those couple of little cuts and the disc sander does it so quickly. I think I run 120 grit on the disc sander and shh, came off so quick, not a problem. All right, now I've got those curves. I want to make them even friendlier. So now I'm going to run a quarter inch round over cutter. Where is he? This one here. Okay, quarter inch round over cutter. Pop that in the router table, set it to the right depth. Again, push block. And also you'll notice that I'm using the brass post. Now that post is a very good pivot point. So I push the timber against that post and then lean it, push it and then make it engage the cutter. So it doesn't flick out of, out of the way, I can hold it steady. That's a big assistance. Around I go, other side, do the end, finish flipper over, do the other side, and there you go, the handle is made. All right, what's next? Next thing to do is to uh, sand it. So I literally give it a hand sanding. <laughs> so I've got the 180 paper in my hand and I get the handle and I, I sand it like this. Because you will find you get burn marks on the handles. That's all there is to it. They, it will happen. So you hand sand it and then of course Barry and Padme like to come in and visit and see what's going on and uh, you have to stop and smell the flowers every now and then. So I take a bit of time out for that. Uh, all sanded, ready to go. Now we're going to glue the handles onto the fronts of the drawers. We need to measure in from either side to find the center. Measure the length of the handle. Subtract half of that from the distance from the side to the center. And so we can measure from one side. Of course, we don't want to put a whole lot of pencil marks on the front of this drawer because we just got to sand them off again. So if I've got one pencil mark there, there's going to be a reference to one side uh, all the better. Also, I put the handles right at the top because if it's in the middle, it's going to be in the way of the pencils coming out of the drawer below. And that's going to be annoying. So if it's up the top, it's just that little bit further away. And also, the other good thing about having it up the top there, I'll show you on here. The other good thing about having the handle near the top is if it's near the top or at the top, I can still get my fingers underneath to pick the drawer up if it's sitting on the floor or sitting on a, on a table if I've taken the drawer out of the box for whatever reason. If you put it in the middle, it's getting harder to get your finger under there. You, it, it, you're fighting with it. Just a little thing I thought of as I was going along. All right, now we're gluing the handle on. The tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit of glue. I spread it with this tiny little spatula, just the end here, only a tiny bit, and I just keep working it out until it's all the way around. And I don't want any squeeze out. It's so crucial. Don't get any squeeze out on this because it's a pain in the neck. Then I clamp it. And what do I use? What do I use? I say, Whoa! Then I clamp it with these guys. Now these guys are terrific because when I put them on top, it 
there's no weight pulling one way or the other. If I used one of my other clamps, I'd have the arm hanging out. It's going to want to do this. It's want to twist. I don't want any uh, lateral load on this joint at all. I just want it to be able to set in a peaceful manner. <laughs> okay, so these things are great. Now, when you do that, I'll show you a picture here. Make sure that the pivot that these things rock around on, see that, that it's rocking? Make sure that pivot is dead center of the handle and that will give it even distribution of load. There you go. I almost sound like I don't know what I'm talking about there. Heaven forbid. All right, so now we've got the handle clamped on and glued and it's dried. We take the clamps off and we give it another little light sand just around the front there. Look for any marks on the drawer that's happened while you've been mucking around doing other things. Give them a light sand off if you found any. Then we're going to put the finish on. And again, I just go for the same clear water-based finish that I used on the outside of the box. And two coats. And when you're, when you're doing this section here, do this part first. So basically, push the finish into there and pull it back up onto this stiffener and then pull it away from there as well. And then turn it up this way and then just finish painting the varnish downwards. And hopefully you won't get any puddles up there. The whole thi thing, puddles there look terrible. So just make sure that it keeps coating away. Do the edge, do that. Don't do the underside because it's already glued in. Of course, can't do the underside if it's glued in. Okay, so we've, we've got all the, all the stuff done. And then I've got some video. I've got some video here of also using 320 grit uh, with the dowel to sand out the slots uh, between coats as well. Only just a little bit, just a tiny bit, just to get rid of the fibers so that with the next coat it's going to be super smooth. And you know what? It is super smooth. All finished. Now, what we have to do is make sure that it's got beautiful slip. The drawers are probably sliding in there quite well at the moment, but you might find they chatter a little. So we're going to rub all over with a candle. This is just a little bit of candle. This is a bit of Arthur's candle that I've used. It's brilliant. Uh, all over the top of the varnish. When it's finished, on the sides and on the top as well, and anywhere that may come into contact with the outside box, the friction points. And you'll be amazed at the difference. You don't have to use a lot, but you will be absolutely, push it in and out a couple of times and you, it glides, absolutely glides. That's a big part of it. You might find that the drawer is sitting inside the outside box by about four millimeters, and that was all part of the design. We're going to put buffers in. These buffers are designed to go on the underside of bar stools, and they're a very small one, and about three or four millimeters thick, and they've got a self-adhesive pad on the back. This is the stuff I got. I don't know if you can see that. Just from a local hardware store. And that's what they look like. There's two there. You just cut them apart, sticky paper on the back, peel it off, and you stick it onto just the edge. You stick onto a long stick, and you poke the stick down inside with the adhesive side facing down, get another long stick, push it against it, pull the other stick out, tap, 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 and it's done. Now, there's a trick here as well. If you put it in the middle, you might get a better result if you put one in the center. You can put one either side, if, if you're lucky. <laughs> See how it goes, trial and error. I did a couple on the sides, and I did one in the middle, and the one in the middle I found worked better. All right. Now what's next? What's next? That's right, it's all finished, felted, uh, load her up with pencils. This is what it's all about. Load this bad boy up with pencils and we're going to do the handover. And this is where you may get a couple of tears happening because people appreciate things that have been handmade. If it was just a tin, if I was to give someone a tin of pencils like this, they'd love it. They would think I'm just the best person in the world. But if you give them something like this, but put it in something that you've created, and it just changes the platform totally. And watch this. There's something down there on the saw bench for you. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, it's beautiful, David. It is. So. You can take them all the way out if you want to. Oh, right. David, it's beautiful. Mm. Really is beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Thank you. 
and it was set on the table that Dad made. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, beautiful. there you go. I was starting to well up a little bit even just thinking about it. It was such a beautiful experience giving someone a gift like this. What I will do is I'll make some plans up for this lot and I'll put a link in the description box. I'll probably put them up on Etsy or somewhere like that. Thanks so much for watching and putting up with me. It's been a really enjoyable series. I hope you've had as much satisfaction out of it as I have. Give me a thumbs up if you thought it was good fun and keep coming back. See you next time. Bye.